pop in here. Let's go to the stream mana here. The stream mana here. All right, everything's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. It's my. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Megan. Audrey. Good morning, Grace. GMC. You are a, uh, you're a, making, you're a make of car. Madison, welcome. Let's open up the thing on my phone here. Sophia and Tyler SS and TT if you're wondering why I do that um, I have initials on my little list here <laughs> so you gotta get written down as initials there's only there's only uh, um two overlapping ones so that's what makes it easier for me to uh to do that good morning elena um so i hope you all um have a chance to finish uh if you haven't already uh finish um magnificent seven Morning, Leah. Um, I watched the rest of it last night, and uh, yeah, it wasn't. I mean, that the last twenty minutes, there's not a lot that for your paper, at least. So that's that's not fine. Uh, that's that's fine. Most of the most of the stuff happened on the stream, so you can have that with you. Okay. Um, where am I? Uh, yeah. AJ, what's up? Uh, so, yeah. So today, we are going to talk about... Uh, no. uh, we are going to talk about stereotypes today. And I kind of want you all... So I've gotten... So I got a lot of responses... Right, I got a lot of responses, um, a lot of questions. I don't know why I'm saying responses. A little bit slow this morning. <laughs> uh, so I got a lot of questions, and I I took a uh, like I like I have been doing. I took one of each that I've come through. Good morning, Kitty. Um, and uh, but I kind of want the stream to also be driven by you I, I keep asking questions they were really good questions and i'd like to get to all of them and so if there's a point at which we are like not even we're not talking about anything um like specifically like an activity that i found a link that i found a video that i found i i, I do want it to be driven by chat and please feel free to direct questions to each other because we have a really diverse group of people in this chat in this class um so uh ask questions to each other and I, let's not make it just me i can offer the science perspective of course if there's that but i kind of want i kind of want a uh an interdialogue for these next three days um uh, where, especially tomorrow with our chat on prejudice and uh, Thursday, our chat on um, discrimination and reducing prejudice, 
Uh, I really want that driven by you all because uh, you are the future. You are the world, right? So um, let's let's so keep that in mind, right? So let's have this a, a as a proactive discussion. Pretty please. Um, so really good questions, like I said, and I'm sure, um, uh, and I'm sure there will be even better questions the next couple of days. Uh, so keep them coming, keep them coming. Uh, that's 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 fine, Aaliyah. That's fine. Um, no hard and fast. Nine a.m. Uh, I mean it is kind of hard and fast, but like. You're a few minutes late. It's not a big deal. Um, I probably won't grab it though. We've we've started. Um, okay. So my first question to you all. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> So my first question to you all is um, based on a study that I found, which is really interesting. So I'm going to pull it up right now. It's not going to go on screen. So I'm going to switch to our just chatting orientation here um, because I want to, so to speak, hide it from you because um, I don't want you to be reading just reading it. Okay, so my first question has to do with uh, stereotypes, obviously. Uh, okay. I want you to throw in chat and uh, if you don't feel comfortable uh, throwing certain ones out in chat, that's totally fine too. But um, in chat, what I'd like you to do is throw uh, throw up any language-based stereotypes that you know that are based on different kinds of people. So I will I will start. I will give you one. And um, you try to follow with what you know, okay? Well, with what you know. Uh, and this goes to one question that I saw that I didn't actually write, but it's a good question nevertheless. Um, it has to do with uh, do different cultures have different stereotypes or do different generations have different stereotypes and so this kind of goes speaks to that question because if you don't know some of these probably because they have fallen out of favor okay so what do i mean by um language phrases that are stereotypes well i'm sure you have all heard of the chinese fire drill right what is a chinese fire drill Those are the kind of phrases that I am that I am looking for. So whoever says what a Chinese fire drill is, and then um, can you think of any other ones that are related to uh, uh, people? Yeah, yeah. So Kitty and Audrey have the right idea. Um, that, so that's a Chinese fire drill. Right? Okay. So what other language based what are their language based Hi Destiny. Um ones can you think of? Language, so phrases that bring in a certain amount of uh, that bring in a different uh race or ethnicity or culture into it. <clears throat> D 
Do you know any? I have a list of them right here. Indian style, yep. Totally. Mm-hmm. Indian style. Right? Um. Uh, my kids are growing up with cross-legged. Okay. Which is good, right? Shouldn't be calling it Indian style. Because one... They're not Indians, they're Native Americans, yeah? Um, and two, like, it's just a way to sit. Uh, what other ones do you know? I, I think you're probably familiar with one of these on the list. Uh, Jerry-rigged. Okay, that's fine. Kitty. Uh, French kissing. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's not on my list, but yeah. Just kissing with tongue. Just call it kissing with tongue. Why not? Mm. Swapping spit. <laughs> yeah. When you phrase it like that. Ugh. What else? What else do you know? How about when you swear? What do you what what do what do some people say when they swear? <clears throat> Excuse my. Indian giving, yeah. That's a big one on this list. That's uh that's definitely uh excuse my French, Joe. Yeah, you got it. You got it. And wash your mouth out with soap. You could do that as well. Uh excuse my French. Yes. So and then Indian giving, of course. Hi Merrick. Um, so there are a few others that I want to, uh, so if, if you have any more, just let me know. Um, I would like to talk about this one, um, a little bit more. Okay. So how many of you have heard of, um, I got gypped or they're trying to gyp me? Because this one, I think, is important, and I think we need to get rid of it from uh, common vernacular and uh, explaining. And not a lot of people know the history of this one. So let me know if you've heard that one before uh, so we can chat about it. Yeah, it does. It definitely does, Kitty. Um, and... <clears throat> I'm, well, I'm very glad that you've never heard it, Sophia. It is. It is referring to gypsies. So, all right. So, if you've heard of getting gypped, or somebody's trying to gyp me, or I got gypped, um, gypped is spelled G-Y-P-E-D, okay, G-Y-P-E-D, and it's referring to gypsies, um, and the definition that is in the American Heritage Dictionary is that it is a defrauding or robbing of some, by some sharp practice some like like oh i got I, I got swindled i got cheated that sort of thing right um so that's what it means to be gypped and i'm here to tell you that we need to remove that 100 percent because the gypsies were a group are it, they're technically romani okay so think of eastern europe romania okay they're an ethnic group um, in Romania, Romani, and gypsy was a common term for them, um, way, 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 way back in the day, and like, uh, like, uh, 200 years ago, 100, 200 years ago, um, 
and they were viewed as second-class citizens, maybe even third-class, by the dominant ethnic group in Romania at the time. And um, one of the stereotypes that was associated with them was that they were cheaters, con artists, um, mis- and, and a lot of it had been applied to like mystical witchery and witchcraft and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, that saying that I got gypped was saying that like this low class person just cheated me out of money by using their tricks and their brains and they made me feel stupid and and um now it leads you know leads people to to denigrate them and discriminate against them and and that sort of thing and but the the gypped idea g y p e d um stuck around uh hitler you know, in the 1930s and 1940s, uh, also rounded up gypsies that were in um, in Europe at the time, uh, especially the ones when he got to Eastern Europe, um, but through advancing through Poland and Czechoslovakia and, and etc. He rounded up not only Jews, but he rounded up gypsies as well. And so the uh, ethnic population of gypsies was decimated uh, during World War II, but still that gypped stuck around um and we need to get rid of that 100 percent. get rid of that um so yeah another one that is in this list here um that people have um have so this the, this list by the way was from a study uh, from kite and whitley um Kite and Whitley back in, uh, what the, what's the, Teaching of Psych, um, 2012. So, not terribly too much older than you, the college students in a social psych class in the Midwest. Oops. Say where? Ball State. Ball State University out in, uh, Muncie, Indiana. Um, okay, so they had these, you can imagine who the makeup of these, of these students were, right? Um... Uh, where was I? Oh, so how many of you have heard of Get Your Irish Up? That one was perceived as with high negative valence. Get your, get your, um, get your Irish up. Okay. You may have heard it if you are actually have Irish heritage, right? Uh, Right, so this one it has to do with um, becoming angry or outraged. Okay, so that's and that scene is negative, right? Uh, so the idea is the um, family left, so he's why didn't they take me? Okay, lay down, buddy. You're fine. All right. Um. Right, so that one was perceived as very negative by this group of students. Um, another one that was perceived quite significantly uh, negative was Jew down on a price. Okay, so the stereotype of Jew down on a price um, has to do with the other stereotype of uh, Jewish individuals being quote unquote stingy with their money, right? And so the idea of Jew down on a price to bargain sharply, right? To to to, to smash down in price, right? Um. So that one was actually perceived. Well, no, the, it was the second most. Um. The the uh, kitty mentioned Indian giver earlier, and um. Um, that one was perceived to be the worst out of this list. Jew down on a prize was the second worst. Um, have you ever heard of Welsh, Welshing on a bet? Not Welch, Audrey. Welshing on a bet.
So I actually had never heard this one before. I mean, I'm, I may have heard it in conversation, but like I, it, it, it never come up, right? Um, <laughs> Kitty, that is right about Indian giving. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> so Welshing on a bat is um to. I'm sure you can get it without even knowing that this is what this is what Welsh people may have done, may or may not have done, right? Um, it is, right, to cheat by failing to pay a gambling debt, okay? Or to go back on one one's word, like a promise, right? So, it's like, were Welsh, were the Welsh just like that? Like, really? That's very, um, very strange to me, but don't use it. Um, have you heard of Ugly American? Have you heard Ugly American? <clears throat> oh, so there's a great there's a great line that came up in my uh Um, memories yesterday here from Monty Python okay um a quote on a wafer thing Okay, where is it? Easy. Uh. Damn, I can't find it, so I'm going to paraphrase it. <laughs> so, Death comes in into a dinner scene, and they're all like, Why is Death here? Um, because they ate, they all ate something that killed them. Like, they all ate something that poisoned them. And uh, the American in the group was just like, C Can I say something? And Death is like, No! No, you stupid! Stupid American always saying things like, Can I just say something? Could you give me a minute? No. No, you can't say something. You're dead now. And so the American shuts up. It's funnier from them, not from me. I just spat all over my, um, just spat all over. Mmm, good stuff. All right. So, that's how language, that's how language comes together with, um, ethnic groups, race, uh, race, and all sorts of things. That's how it comes together, and it embeds itself into our language, right? Um, and one, um, one person ask is there always a kernel of truth in stereotypes and um the answer is probably yeah um but is the truth a global truth probably not um the idea about kernel of truth hypothesis is that it is a one person's truth it's a single person's truth because they witnessed they observed it and through um rumor or text or uh by a game of of telephone these things tend to just spread um so so you we have this um one person's truth and that would be become the kernel and the kernel is always super super tiny right if you think of 
uh, a kernel of corn or you think of a kernel in popcorn, right? They're always very small. That's what this is. That's that's what the kernel of truth is. Um, so that hypothesis is not referring to a global truth about whatever group it is you're talking about. It is a single person's truth and maybe another person's truth and it just catches like wildfire and it goes on and on and on, right? Um, and that spreads, okay? That spreads. And so we can always come back to the kernel of truth. Where did the kernel of truth start? Okay. Um, so now I have an activity for you all. I have an activity for you all. Let me um, grab it here. Um, I one that I will to. Let me just load it up. Okay, yeah. It's one that you'll do on your own. So here it comes in chat. So go to the pbs.org, um, sorting people. Uh, a colleague uh, of mine in, in the Society for Teaching of Psychology did a demo of this at a uh, 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 teaching conference a few years ago. But I think we'll just we'll just stick with this one. Okay, we'll stick with this. One. So. Oh, okay. There we go. It's over, so chat's not in the way of that. All right. So go ahead and do that one and begin sorting. Try your hand at sorting and see if it matches how people think of themselves or explore how we might sort by physical traits. Okay. So consider that. Um. <laughs> uh, I'm not downloading Flash. Too funny okay it's probably not gonna work then that's a bummer um, do not download the latest version of flash all right let me open um leslie's here dr bertson's there. Yeah, I did that. I wish people didn't flash crap. Requires the Flash 6 plugin. Probably have way more. Alright, we're not doing that one. Flash. Stupid. Stupid Flash. Okay, we're gonna do this one. Instead. This one you can just do by looking at the screen, okay? So this is from a study um, back in um, well, in any case, we're gonna do uh, the stuff in table one, okay? So we're gonna do the stuff in table one. Let me increase the size of. Wrong button. My apologies, everyone. Okay, so ignore table two, please. Ignore table two. And what I want you to do is identify one individual. So you're going to think of your... F How about you think of your friend or family group? Okay. And you are going to identify that single person in like a Word document or um, on a piece of paper that you have. Okay. So... Identify one individual of each of the following. So you should have three people. You should have an endomorph that you would describe as plump. Don't include yourself in this. Just another person that you know. Okay. Mesomorphs are muscular. Okay. Um, and endomorphs are frail. Okay. So identify that and, um, and so using the format for 
B. So once you have that person, you can use their individual, but you're the only one seeing it. So you could use their name if you really, really want to. And you can identify what kinds of uh, features they have. Okay. Um, so you write these three down, and then you go to C, and you use only these things. You use them once. So you should have three individuals, one who's an endomorph, one who's a mesomorph, and one who's an ectomorph. Okay. Uh, kitty does frail equal thin live. Yeah, sure. Those are those are fine definitions. Um. Oh, this is body size, Adrian. Body size. Body size stereotypes or body type stereotypes. Okay. So for the endomorph individual, you're gonna do an R B or I. For the mesomorphic individual, you're gonna do an R B or I. And for an ectomorphic individual, you're going to do the R, B, and I. But remember, you cannot repeat the R, B, or I. If you use R, then you only have B or I left. If you use R and B, then you only have I left. You only use the R, B, and I once, okay? Um, for that particular person, right? And so this is what R means, this is what B means, and this is what I means, right? So you're going to... Figure that out, okay? You're going to figure that out on your own. And then you're going to tell me in chat, once you do that, you're going to tell me in chat where you've placed your R, B, and I. So kind of like this table here. Where have you placed the R, B, and I? So R stands for relaxed. B is bold. I is inhibited because those are the first traits that were listed here. And then you're going to assign them. So you're going to tell me in chat, just like R is for the mesomorph person that I, that I place. Remember, the R, B, and I should not be applied to this table. It should be applied to the person that you identified. Okay? It'd be the person that you identified. And then drop drop your pairs in chat. Not the person's name. Just pairs in chat. And none of these people should be you. Come on, lay down, Moody. Come on, lay down. Okay. Right there. Not super great because that's... I might move chair, but... Okay. He just like, literally laid it down right behind my chair. <laughs> Uh goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, Kitty, you put your I for endo, B for meso, and R for ecto. Okay, so B endo, I is ecto, and R is meso. Okay. To create a tally here on my end as keep keep them coming everyone keep them coming keep them coming and I'm gonna make my own type uh, our... so we have let's go back to kitty so tally here separate a little bit more one uh, okay We've got Grayson in here. 
Mezzo R Acto. Okay, and then Sophia's coming in with Endo I. <clears throat> Mezzo. Acto. Hmm. Got some patterns coming up here. Uh, Madison's coming in with Endo R. Mezzo. And. Where am I? Acto. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sophia's got Endo. Mezzo as R. And Ecto is I. Five eyes so far for Ecto. Uh, okay, AJ's got Endo B. Endo B. Mezzo R. And Ecto I. Six. Destiny's coming in with Endo B. Five there. Mezzo R. And Ecto I. That one, yeah, that one's, that one's, that one's pretty clear. So as the tally stands now, still waiting for a few others to come on in with this one. Um, as the tally stands now, we've got, uh, for Endomorph, we've got two, I'm just going to do RBI in order here. Two, five, two. For Mezzo, uh, Mesomorphs, we got five, two, and zero. And for Ectomorphs, we've got one, zero, seven. Ah, that's a lot. That's a lot in that. Um, so, so why do we, what is this all about? What is this all about? Well, I mean, you can read this article if you want to. Um, some of my friends are fat. Others are thin, and some are built like Arnold Schwarzenegger, a body typing exercise that teaches critical thinking. Um, undergraduate student be students benefit from a class exercise that examines the relationship between body builds and personality characteristics. Procedures were designed to allow students to confront biases about their own friends and acquaintances in the context of Sheldon's stereotypes. It's all from the 1940s, by the way, these, um, these identifiers of RBI. Um, uh, somatotypes, excuse me, somatotypes, those are the ecto, endo, and mesomorphs, okay. Class discussion about the demonstration can incorporate a broad range of topic areas, including stereotyping, okay, so that's what we're obviously focused on. So, the stereotypes have to do with where you all put your endo, meso, and ectomorphs, okay, where you put those people, where you put those friends of yours, which is a incredibly important right because you're just thinking about that person it has nothing to do with their actual personality it's where you've placed them right it's where you've put them by just thinking of what it means to be plump um a, a body bill a, a big a muscular um person or a frail person right it it, it it only has to do with those three things and that's all the way from the 1940s sheldon um Stevens and Alvin Stevens and Tucker here. So to classify your friends as one of those three, your friends or family or acquaintances or whatever, classify them as one of those three, you are already engaging in body type stereotyping. Okay, you are already engaging them. You are already placing them in a group that I've only given you one piece of information to use to place somebody in that group. There's that there's that kernel of truth idea coming in, right? So we have that. And then we go further with the stereotype and I give you even more information about um, personality for those three body types. And I tell you, okay, now... Now, do further categorization, and again, you're stereotyping just by the RBI, the relaxed ones, the bold ones, 
and the uh, inhibited ones, you're, you're, you're already placing it. And so I wanted to use this moment to jump into, to jump into um, a question that, uh, if you, I mean, a few people asked this question, so this is like a broad question. Um, where was it? Oh, I guess I didn't write it down, but it, it was clear. <laughs> um, the idea that I the 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 questions and the ideas that I read uh, from your uh, posts were things along the lines of do we constantly do this? Do we constantly do this? And the answer to that to that question is yes. We're constantly stereotyping people. We're constantly doing this because it's uh, efficient. It's mentally efficient to do this. So we keep doing it. We keep doing it. And we'll never stop doing it because it is how our uh, architecture, our cognitive architecture has evolved. We will constantly stereotype. Um, we will constantly stereotype. But then the 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 that begs the question. Okay, so we constantly stereotype. How can we stop ourselves from implicitly stereotyping? Well, or what do we? Where do we go for? Uh, where do we go from here? Well, we can't stop ourselves from ex uh, implicitly stereotyping because that is uh, our our cognitive architecture is about categorizing and stereotypes is stereotyping is a form of categorization okay we, we we take one bit of information and we can we roll with it we continue with it we keep using it um because it helps us categorize um and so we can't stop that because that's an implicit thing that we do but as goes the theme of this course you can recognize when you are using a stereotype and you can stop, you can learn to pause, you can learn to slam the brakes, to slam the brakes. Um, yes, Sophia, you can slam the brakes from, from going from type one thinking that's fast and automatic to type two and say, whoa, 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 maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that, um, that retailer, um, swindled me out of my money by saying I got gypped, right? Uh, maybe you don't have to do that. So can we stop ourselves from implicitly stereotyping? No, but we can learn to not make them explicit. Okay. Um, Kitty, you've asked a couple of questions. I want to go ahead and briefly uh, talk to them, uh, uh, speak to them. Stereotyping kind of built into our brains to be able to recognize danger quickly where we're still living in caves and small villages. Yeah, and some of the things that also got that we bring up in the the lecture video associated with this live stream is that um you know this inner group conflict um and categorizing people as the other or the out group you get get very quick on and so yeah we have to efficiently stereo we have to efficiently categorize and one of the, and that has become stereotyping that efficient categorization has become stereotyping. And then to your further point, which is um, society has evolved faster than our brains. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, ev evolutionary psychologists will uh, tell you, at least, at least I know one evolutionary psychologist that will tell you we have a 10,000-year-old brain in a modern society. At least that was one of the things that I took from her at Evo Psych class. So, yeah, we have an old brain that is still trying. That has evolved, of course. It's evolved over millennia um, from when humans became actual humans. But you take into consideration 
how earlier hominids and how earlier humans were dealing with this information, the evolution does um, does not match with the way that society has changed, the way that we've advanced civilization. Um, has n our brain has not caught up to it. So we have an old brain to deal with modern problems, and um, we get into trouble quite a bit because um, because we don't have the the cognitive tools necessary to just turn those things off. Right? Some of those uh, problems are demonstrably wrong problems and not progressive. Uh, but we still, and, and so just saying, oh, my brain doesn't work because it hasn't evolved like that. Um, you can't just say that. You can't just be like, well, you know, I, I've got this crappy piece of hardware. Um, and so I can do whatever I want. Mm -mm. Just because it's old doesn't mean that it's broken or it's not broken. Um, and doesn't mean that it can't be improved upon. Yeah. Um, alrighty. Where was I going with that? <laughs> Next thing. Um, I do want to uh, pause real quick with some light humor. Okay. There is some language, but since the vast majority of my viewers right now are from the Midwest, there is language. There are a few F words. Um, so if you don't want to watch the F words, then uh, you might just and put on um, captions. So I, this is a fair warning about language, okay? Um, so many, uh, myself, I'm not from the Midwest, but I live in the Midwest, and so I think it's it's kind of funny from an outside who an outsider who's inside perspective um, say about that. But for those of you who are from the Midwest, you'll probably get a kick out of this one, okay? So I hear you think you know something about Iowa. Fuck you. You heard we're a bunch of knee-jerk conservative reactionaries. Uh, I guess that's why we went Democratic in five out of the last six presidential elections. How are you like me now? Did your state legalize gay marriage before us? Probably not. The first woman in America to become a lawyer was in Iowa in 1869. You think we're all hillbillies? Well, four out of five of us live in the city, punk. What about farmers, you say? You think farmers are hillbillies? Sit down, son. One Iowa farmer feeds 155 of you. Do you like to eat? Looks like it. You think farming is easy? The average Iowa farm is larger than 300 football fields. It takes a fleet of tricked out machines and a shit ton of ag science to make it all work. How tough is your job? Don't answer. You look like you could use a break. Iowa has the sixth lowest unemployment in the nation. Des Moines was ranked the richest metro in the country and the second happiest. You sure can't have it all. Play up. So stop worrying about what we know and spend a little more time on what you don't know. And next time you fly over, give us a wave. We'll wave back. We're nice. That's right. We're nice. Fuck wad. I'm out. One more thing, you're probably watching this on a computer. Any guesses as to where it was invented? New York, MIT, California. Think again, bitch. University of Iowa in Ames. Grayson, I'm moving to Iowa. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. They're, uh, oh. What happened to that window? All right, uh, let me <laughs> let me reopen Chrome here. Uh, not entirely. Oh, I oh, okay. I all right. I know what happened. Uh, that poor sponge cake. Doesn't the musical The Music Man have an entirely so a song about the iciness of Iowans? I don't know. Never heard of that. Never heard of it. 
I just thought it was, I, I came across that and I thought, you know, regardless of the language uh, and the uh, specific attack on uh, people who think it's a flyover, right? Um, not be fooled, right? To not be fooled. Excuse me. So, uh, da -da -diddly -diddly. so what, what what I want to do is one more um, one more thing about stereotypes before uh, we take a break and shift the conversation a little bit. Um, I wanted to I wanted to talk about how uh, stereotypes can I, I know we're focusing a lot on people and we will continue to focus a lot on people, um, but I, what I, what I did want to do is 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 talk about um, driver uh, stereotypes about cars. So people in a study were asked um, how fast were these two cars going, and they specifically had this beat up red old Volkswagen go 10 miles an hour faster than this um, nice slick maroon BMW. Okay. Uh, both German cars are actually uh, quite, they're a little bit related. It's a Volkswagen Polo, by the way, if you've never seen this car before. <laughs> okay. And what, what, what do you think happened? They, they said... They said the the BMW was going faster than the Polo, and not all not demonstrably true. But we have certain stereotypes about these these cars. BMWs go fast; they go vroom vroom um, down on the autobahn, and they're like, "Yeah, can this?" So this 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 BMW has probably well this particular BMW is probably a V12, um, considering how big the uh, hood compartment is here. Um, and this is a t probably a tiny little four-cylinder car. This produces way more power than this one. And yet, in a closed situation, you can make this one go faster than this one, obviously, right? Speed is just speed. But if you show that to somebody and you're like, ah, oh, it's going faster because it's a BMW, then you're in the realm of stereotypes. Because it's a insert group here, then that's a stereotype. Okay? It does X because it is part of group Y. That's the stereotype. And so now you can take that definition and apply it to people. Okay? And this gets applied to people all the time. What are your um what are the stereotypes that you are most that you are most um familiar with? Drop them in chat. What are the stereotypes that you are most familiar with? And you will likely see the matching of that definition it does x because of being in group y what are your best what are your most familiar and this could be something that um has been applied to you um this could be something that um you may have applied to some money somebody right no judgment no malice here um be uh quite be uh, respectful of others too. No, no, um, no profanity or anything like that, or or crassness when you when you drop those in chat. Um, but but let me know what you what you are most familiar with because I am curious about people your age um, and the stereotypes that they're most familiar with. And a uh, question was uh, there was a question about. Can stereo? Oh, there's actually a few questions about can stereotypes be positive? I want you to try to think of. I want you to try to think of a positive one. Think of a positive one. Okay, Joe coming out with black people love watermelon. Would you consider that one a positive one, Joe? 
Would you consider that one a positive one? Um, Elena, mixed girls are whitewashed. Okay. I assume, Elena, you mean um, uh, part of the part of the racial mix of the, the, the person is that they're white. Okay. Women can't drive. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sophia, girls being bad at math, so I use that for, for stereotype threat. Um, but I would argue boys are bad at math. <laughs> I think you can just say people are bad at math. Um, so. Asians are smart and good at math. Black people love fried chicken. Oh, where's your fried chicken emoji? Where's your drumstick? I can't stand watermelon. So that would be a negative one to you then, I guess, Joe, right? Uh, so, so yeah, there were there were a few questions. Can you even think of a positive one? What, would they even be used in a positive way? Like, we'll go to Asians are smart and good at math. Is that is that on its face positive? I know Andrew Yang, at, as a presidential candidate, tried to use it as a positive feature of him because he was trying to say that he was good at math because he was Asian. He knows a lot of doctors because he was Asian, right? But are those actually positive? Or are they a negative stereotype meant to uh or uh, a negative stereotype wrapped in this positive veneer like oh i'm just saying that they're they're good at it though i'm just saying that they're good at it uh where's the malice in saying that they're good at it it's because by saying that you are making the assumption that other groups aren't good at it okay you're saying that, um, that uh, Latinx people are not good at math by saying that Asians are, right? You're you're saying that, um, and then do do these positive ones not interact with each other? Um, like you can say that uh, that Asians are good at math, but then you can say that girls aren't good at math. Well, that doesn't that doesn't mix. That doesn't juxtapose well with the one that you just said. You know, you, you are you going to try to to then smooth it out and say, oh well, well that excludes Asian girls. Well, then, what's the point of the stereotype if you're just going to start excluding groups or, or subgroups from your original stereotype, right? Um. show <laughs> dirt eat dirty water in fruit form <laughs> oh man that's too funny uh black people can't swim is another good one and, and so joe you're you're focusing on 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 um on 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 black ones and I wonder, like, well, you're obvious. These are so the the watermelon one. People could perceive as positive. Um, the uh, the other one, fried chicken, could potentially be perceived as positive. I don't think either one are positive because they're meant um, in derogatory ways. Uh, and then the black people can't swim uh, is definitely a negative one. Um, so I, I I like your mix here. I like your mix your mix here. Uh, Sophia, some stereotypes seem good, but tend to be brought up as a counter to someone's behavior. Oh, yes. That's the other part of whether or not, um, stereotypes are positive or create positive effects. Because they, because they, because they really don't. Right? An Asian person being bad at math, saying that I thought Asians were, were good at math. Like, ugh. You're, you're a, you're ashamed to the group that you're supposed to be a part of person. Like, Really? Really? Right? Um Grayson, that's a that's a that's a good one. Um Mexican work hard. Except 
and, I, and it's interesting that you you throw that one up because the one that I think um, Latinos will will say Latinx folks will say off the bat is that actually the stereotype is is the opposite of that that they're lazy. Um, so it's an interesting change. It's an interesting shift from at least my life versus um, your life. I'm um, but you can see where these, these, these things come from, right? You can see where they come from. All Mexicans speak Spanish. Okay. I mean, it is, it is their official language, but are you saying like people who are Chicanos, Mexican Americans? Or that people from South America can speak Spanish? So my point here is that, uh, before we, we take a break, my point here is that um, a stereotype might have positive language associated with it, might have positive language, but they don't, they aren't used in a positive way. They are not used. Oh, so, yeah. We're going to take a break here. Um, come back at... Uh, so we'll just take a take a five-minute break. Um, for those in the central time, go ahead and come back at 10.08. Um, 10.08. Um, Bill Braham, um, no, I will not be breaking down Kanye's life. All righty. See you all in about five minutes. In it.
Alrighty. Switching back here. This view while I get some stuff going. So, um, while I was taking a break, a lightning bolt. Okay, we're getting thunderstorm today here in Peoria. Um, a lightning bolt struck nearby, not terribly too close because there was a delay between the flash and um, between the flash and the thunder, but it was definitely cloud to ground, and it was definitely nearby, and it sounded like a bomb went off near my house. It it literally sounded like a bomb. It was like very resonant explosion sound um and murphy is shaking right now murphy is shaking you saw that strike oh my gosh where was it audrey it could could you pinpoint it i only saw the flash of light it was very blinding gigantic boom like, this is the most scared Murphy has, has been. This is the most scared he has been. He is... He's shaking. He's underneath... He is underneath my desk right now. Oh. I wish I had a movable camera I'd show you, but this, this camera is attached to my, my computer. It's gone. Saw the light and the thunder. Okay. Well, you didn't see the thunder. Obviously. I know what you meant. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Some thunderstorms these days. My goodness. My goodness, my goodness. Hi, Rachel. Um, glad to, um, glad to have you here. Hope everything went well. All right. Alrighty. So, where were we? We were talking about stereotypes. Um, and a question came up about... Oh, where was it? Question came up about um, guess I didn't copy that one down either. Um, about in groups and out groups, in groups and out groups, and I um, want to talk to you about the other race effect. The other race effect. Okay. Um, and you may have seen this one because it's a few years old. You may have seen this one. Uh, the other race effect. So the other race effect is for your own race recognizing the subtle differences in members of your own race in order to tell them apart but not recognizing those same subtle differences in other races or other ethnicities, okay? So here is the example that I have for you. Uh, I have a couple of examples. Um, is uh, this one, you may have seen this one, but the last, so these uh, four girls have the last name Wynn, okay? That's how it's pronounced. If you are if you've ever been unsure about that, it's Wynn, like, W I N. Okay. And for their senior quotes in this book, they wrote, We are not related. They just have the same last name, right? Um and by staring at the photos, you can probably see that they have subtle differences between them. Okay, just because they have the same last name doesn't mean they're related. But let's say you're a white person. And um, you come across a bunch of people with the last name Smith. You don't go, oh, well, all those Smiths, they're all the same. No, you'll be able to spot the differences between all of those people with the last name Smith 
uh, if they are all white. If you were a white person and they are all white. Okay. So this um, was um, uh, very clear the other day when Marco Rubio, the senator from... Um, Senator from Florida, you may have seen this. Oh, I that was New York Times. I shouldn't have seen that. Um Um, you may have seen Marco Rubio. That's Marco Rubio. There have been a lot of jokes about whether that's Marco Rubio. Um so Marco Rubio said to, um, <laughs> said, uh, so John Lewis died. I think I mentioned this last week or, or not, something. I don't remember. Um, but I think I said it on stream, but John Lewis died. He was a lion of the, um, civil rights movement in Congress for 30 some years. Um, he recently died. He died last week. And then earlier this year, Elijah Cummings died. He was also a very uh, a very important figure in the um, Congressional Black Caucus uh, from Baltimore. Um, and he died shortly after the impeachment hearings. Uh, and Marco Rubio, to memorialize John Lewis, went on Twitter and posted this photo of him. And... Elijah Cummings and he said John Lewis and there you have the other race effect in a nutshell okay there you have the other race effect in a nutshell and I just realized I'm not showing you there you go so that's the tweet it's been it's since been deleted um, and he posted a photo of him and John Lewis. Um, but the idea was that, uh, that that's the other race effect. The other race. Okay. Um, and people made fun of Marco Rubio. Um, by replacing him with other Cuban Americans, I guess. Other potentially white looking people. And there you go. That's the other race effect. Anybody have any other um, uh, examples of the other race effect and uh, stereotypes regarding that? thunder Mike's picking up just the small bit of the bass but you probably won't hear it because I have a noise gate Oh, there's definitely more, Grace, and there is definitely more. It's, it's thinking music right now.
Okay, I guess folks are blanking on that. That's fine. That's fine. You can just stare at this. <laughs> All right. So I have a couple of questions for you. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, should adult males be allowed to sit next to unattended children on planes? Should adult males be allowed to sit next to unaccompanied children? Never thought about that? Yeah, well, that's why I'm asking. You gotta think about it. Oh, okay. Frequently is alone? Yeah. Uh, I did, uh, with my sister. On a company. Yes, Rachel. Okay. Any other thoughts from any other person in chat about, um, should we allow adult males and under unattended children on planes? What stereotype am I? What stereotype am I referencing here? Okay, Audrey, you, you hit it, yeah. Uh, capable of being a predator. So, it's the it's the man. Here's the thing. This actually happened. This actually happened. Back in 2013, a male nurse was sitting next to a child, an unaccompanied minor. He was asked to move. He was asked to change seats. So, stereotypes are pretty difficult. Pause to stop, right? Um, uh, I have another one for you. What would you think of the person... What would you think of the person driving a car that had front end damage? What would you think of the person? And just answer very quickly. Just answer very quickly. What would you think of the person driving around in a car that had front end damage? Less wealthy, okay. Okay. It got into an accident recently. Fair. You would probably assume they ran into something rather than someone running into them. Hmm. Yeah, so the stereotype here is that you are the offender. You are the offender. So, yeah, think about that one for a little while, right? Irresponsible. That's an interesting one. 
right? And so you compare that one to... You compare that to if they have back bumper damage. Back bumper damage. Okay, so compare those two, and what do you get? You get two different people. You get two different caricatures or uh, profiles of people. Okay. Um, I have another one for you. I have another one for you. <clears throat> Why? Why are there so few female chess champions? <laughs> That's a good question, Sophia. Um, I would say it's the deer's fault. Should be running across the road. This road that came through your habitat, why... You're not allowed to run through it. <laughs> Dear fault. Why are there so... F so my next... So third question. Why are there so few female chess champions? This one's actually based on... This question comes from an actual study. Okay. This is great. This is great. I like it. I'll, I'll read you the summary of it and just... I, I do want to hear your thoughts. Why are there so few... Like, you never hear of... You never hear of um, any f woman beating Gary Kasparov or, or anything like that. Because, because boys are rude and push away girls who want to play. Wow. Are those... Deep-seated, Sophia? Is that, is that, a per is that personal... mainly male competition, right? So that feeds into the stereotype. That feeds into the idea um, that w that socialization um, really enhances stereotypes. Like the, the comic that I showed of boy toys versus girl toys, right? The gender roles and the gender, so gender socialization about what comes in. Boys are given chess and girls are given something else. Okay. So... Um, this one plays into a question that, um, I think Madison asked, which is, do you, are, is stereotyping a learned behavior or one that we're born with? So that's an interesting question. I'll get to the chess study in just a second. But this is an interesting question because Audrey's, Audrey's response to this fulfills that question. And it's stereotypes themselves are learned but the innate thing that I mentioned, you know, last hour is the um, categorization that we have, the, 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 the processing that we do for categorization. That's innate. That's part of our cognitive architecture and um, our thinking that has evolved over the millennia. But the stereotypes themselves are learned. Yeah. So... Why are there so few female ch chess champions? This is a clever study and an excellent example of stereotype threat. Okay. Stereotype threat. 42 male female pairs matched for ability played two chess games via the internet. When players were unaware of the sex of the opponent, that was the control condition, females played approximately as well as males did. When the gender stereotype was activated, women showed a drastic performance drop, but only when they were aware that they were pay playing against a male opponent. When they falsely believed to be playing against a woman, they performed as well, <laughs> as, well as their male opponent opponents in addition our findings suggest that women show lower chess specific self-esteem and a weaker promotion focus which are predictive of poor chess performance 
So stereotype threat. So this this also this goes to the lecture video where I was talking about um, where I was talking about uh, like math math scores with the example with uh, girls aren't good at math and putting girls in that situation and then reminding them hey girls aren't good at math. What happens to their performance? Well, in the traditional stereotype threat paradigm, which this this um, study that I just said about chess follows, you activate that threat, you activate that stereotype, and people are all like, oh, crap. Now, I do want to say, take that with a grain of salt, because a lot of stereotype threat studies are not being replicated. They are not being replicated um, for a number of reasons. So whether or not the effect is real remains to be solidly seen, right? The evidence suggests that um, it's real, but uh, the circumstances are fairly specific uh, for, for it to actually happen. Um, and in the aggregate, potentially, yes. On an individual level, maybe not. All right, I have another one from you, for you. Do names have anything to do with criminality? That is, phrased another way, do boys with less or less common or unpopular names more likely to be criminals? one's an interesting one far far reaching impact on this one far reaching Unpopular names. We kind of kind of look down at them, don't we? Sure. Yeah. Ah, too much lag. Sorry about that, everyone. I don't know. Maybe the bitrate increased a little bit. Ah. Uh, so the question was for the two of you and anyone else that that got lag there. Uh, the question was, do unusual or unpopular names among boys lead to, um, are, are, are they more likely to be criminals? Criminals. Audrey says she doesn't think so. For every person with a criminal record, there's a person with a criminal record who has the same name and vice versa. Ah, ah. Well done. Critical critical thinking win right there but but do most people think that way it's a bummer man it is a bummer um Do you have an example, Grayson? I, I actually, I'd like to to hear that. Calvera comes up right now. <laughs> uh, do you have any examples of names that um, movies characterize as more criminal? More villainous names. Like... <laughs> Action caused them to be criminals, not their names, Rachel. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Yeah, 
So this is real. This is a real thing. Um, in 2009, an article came out and it uh, was describing a study which finds that, quote, adolescent boys with unpopular names are likelier than other boys to be referred to the juvenile just... No, but... Wait, other way. Yeah. Bam just got home and he's like... Yes! Blake. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, let me... Uh, I'm going to start that quote back. Uh, quote, that adolescent boys with unpopular names are likelier than other boys to be referred to the juvenile justice system for alleged offenses. Ooh, Sophia, I like that exploration. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, bullying really can make people lash out. Bullying is no joke. Um, it's it's a it's a struggle. It's a it's a struggle. Um, and resilience and strength of the individual being bullied is is under is under tremendous pressure. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah, so very good, Sophia. You need to describe. How, so we have some um, underlying causes, potentially. We have some mediating or moderating effects, so interacting effects. So these are really important things to discuss when you find a correlation between things, when you find a relationship between things, right? Um, for those of you who have uh, unpopular names. Now, you have to also define what unpopular means, because... As far as names go, you know, whenever you, um, if you, if and when you decide to have a child, you'll have to figure out a name for that child, and you might explore lists of names and how popular they are. Popularity just, it really means, as far as names are concerned, how many people have that name. So, unpopular names for boys... Like, it just means how many people have that name. So, statistically, if few people have that name and they are, they did something criminal as a teenager, well, yeah, they're going to be referred to juvenile justice more often than people with more popular names because there are just more of them. So, this is a classic case a classic case of the statistics um, really generating the story, really really being the underlying part of this story here, creating the relationship for unpopular names versus popular names, and whether how often people get how often people anything how often anything happens to any kind of person when you take a popularity of names, okay? Yeah, yeah, AJ. Um, some people are afraid to use their names on applications because of biases, for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, Grayson asked a, a question that I think is more appropriate for tomorrow or uh, Thursday, so I'm going to come back to that. But I have a video that will address that particular thing that AJ just said and um, Grayson's question. Okay. Um. Popular name, but an uncommon spelling. Yeah. Would you consider yourself in that group, Rachel? All right. Um, I think I have... Oh, yes. I have one, one more question for you. That has to do with stereotypes. So, um, for those of you who fly, 
And for those of you who plan to fly uh, on airplanes, not by yourself. Did you know flying by yourself is just throwing yourself at the ground and missing it? Douglas Adams came up with that one. Alright. So, my last question to you regarding stereotypes. And this one also does have a little bit of prejudice involved in it too. But we'll just focus on the stereotype aspect of it first. Um, we probably won't bring it up again. Probably won't bring it up again tomorrow, but... Be that as it may. Alright, so my last question to you all is... For those of you who are flyers or plan to fly, uh, do you think the TSA, the Transportation um, Safety Administration, should hire officers with the sole job to with the sole job to analyze facial expressions? How do you feel about that? Their sole job is to analyze facial expressions. What would you say? Grayson doesn't see a problem with it. Micro expressions are essential to figuring what people actually think, okay, and their motives. What is potentially the problem with that? privacy issues. Try to think about it a little bit more broadly than privacy issues. At least within the context of our own discussion here about stereotypes. Audrey says, I don't think that would work very well. There are a ton of normal people who don't have bad intent who still get really anxious at security and read wrong. Yeah. I don't like to be poked and prodded and being... You have to take off your shoes. Just because one guy... One guy tried to stick... Stick something in his shoe... And get past security. One guy! We have to take off our shoes. You even have to take off your flip-flops, which I think is... What am I hiding in my flip flops? What am I hiding? You can see my feet. You can see my feet better in flip flops than you can see when I'm just wearing shoes with socks. You can't see my feet with socks. Nice. I. 
Mike just says, I think that officers should already know about micro expressions and they shouldn't have to hire more officers. <laughs> but okay, be that as it may, um, ignore that for a moment. Ignore that for the moment. Like they have the budget to hire more officers is part of the thought experiment here. <laughs> Oh, man, and you have to take off your belts, too. And the TSA is not fun. And the United States is the most silly when it comes to airport security. Silliest. You have to take off your shoes? Why is that? Oh, one guy tried to blow up a plane with stuff in his shoes. Everyone has to take off their Really? That seems silly. I know. You even have to take off your flip-flops. What? You know, those exploding flip-flops. Gotta watch out for them exploding flip-flops. Uh, we haven't hit we haven't um, the reason why i'm st staying with this waiting for chat to to catch up with me is um we haven't hit the point about this we haven't hit the point <laughs> tasty too <laughs> good old uh yeah an arrow Good times. I don't think that was implemented at all airports, though, which is a bummer. <sighs> so we, we we haven't hit the the major issue associated with trying to read people's expressions, considering that an officer is only one person. An officer is one person. Whose job is to read a bunch of faces. But thousands of people walk through an airport on a daily basis. Especially, we'll, we'll say, we'll, we'll say we're not talking about PIA right now. We're not talking about Peoria. We're talking about like places like O'Hare and LaGuardia and LAX. Okay. Uh, where thousands of people move through security um, every day. <laughs> well, not now, but <laughs> you get my point. Um, so they're, they're focused on faces. Whose faces? That's what I'm trying to ping here. Ooh. Ooh's faces. Ooh's faces. A little bit more, Sophia. A little bit more. Certain race. Come on now. You can. Just because you say it doesn't mean I think you believe it. Doesn't mean people will think you believe it. Um. Oh. Ooh. Specifically, planes, the TSA, and whose faces? Thank you, Tasty Do. Middle Eastern, yes, Middle Eastern folks are going to be looked at way more for longer and disproportionately compared to other faces. For longer and disproportionately to other faces. And I'm just talking about airports, and I'm talking about because that's the terrorist model. That's the terrorist model, right? That's the stereotype of terrorist. They are from the Middle East. Which is obviously not true. But because we had some terrorists who were from the Middle East, 
that's what becomes the stereotype okay that's the kernel of truth there oh so uh would it be helpful or beneficial probably not um it, i think it would be a waste of money um and that's why there aren't very many that that's why there aren't these kinds of officers there are people that look at security feeds but those are constantly changing and nobody's really attached on catching people who seek to do harm on airplanes comes from security screening not sh not taking off shoes but like going through the um the uh, millimeter wave thing and having your bag checked etc that's where um potential harm is caught N nothing else at least the statistics don't point to that. Okay. All right. I think. Um, any. Uh, so I opened the floor to here in the last 10 minutes we have in the stream. What questions do you have that I haven't talked about that are still. Um, that are still outstanding in your mind about stereotypes or we take those stereotypes and talk about prejudice tomorrow okay case you do has a question uh is it more ingrained as a stereotype because they're acts or more because of the media constantly harping on the fact where they came from um Okay, um, I don't know if any other questions are going to come in, but what I'm going to do for the last couple of minutes that we have for this stream is I do want to mention the next two days. So the next two days are going to be on Prejudice, um, which is tomorrow, um, and Discrimination, and a little bit of Reducing Prejudice on Thursday. So if you haven't submitted questions for those two days... I request that um, you tell me what we you tell me what you want to talk about. Um, I would really like to I would really like to keep it current. I really want to talk about current events, um, and I hope you do too. Um, and we can explore all of those things, um, but I really want you to direct me to uh, what what you want to to focus on these next two days. Okay, I really want you to tell me what we fo what we focus on these next few days. Don't uh, you can make it a question if you want to. You can say, "Can we talk about this?" Or you can just say, "Let's talk about this." Okay. And again, it's going to be, it's going to, I really want it to be chat driven. I really want you all to grapple with these, these things directly instead of me just sitting here going, you should do this and you should do that. And we should think about this and da, 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 da. like, it's not coming from the right place, it's not coming from the right place. Okay. Um, I don't societally get prejudiced against and so i cannot empathize with any of it i can i can show empathy but i will never understand that and so what i'd like you to do is tell me what you want to talk about what you want to know and i can provide the science that's what i'm going to be good for i'm going to provide the science time okay. i will 
start with that disclaimer, disclaimer uh, at 9 tomorrow as well. Um, but I do want to... Um, oh, yeah, Sophia, you did ask this question. Um, and I did just write it down. Why do we blankly assume our in-group is good and out-group is bad? Well, that's because we need to protect our identity. Um, the group is part of our identity, as we discussed last week. So we want to protect that identity. And protecting that identity is, in is critical to um, our self-concept and um, understanding where we are in a world of chaos. Okay. And so all good things happen to the in-group, and, and, and that's because of who the in-group is, what constitutes the in-group, right? So in-group, there's an in-group bias here, right? What constitutes uh, in-group is dispositional things, okay? And if bad things or bad situations uh, or, or, or someone is bad in the in-group, it's because of situational factors. And then so for the out group, we do the opposite. We say that um, everything about the out group, uh, anything good about the out group is due to their circumstances. Anything bad about the out group is due to who they are, their dispositions. And so when we do that, we end up with in group good, out group bad, if we're just focusing on the people in that group. Okay, The individuals of that group, we see that, oh, my in group is good because we are good. The outgroup is bad because they're bad, okay? And it's all about protecting your self-identity. It's protecting about it's about protecting your kin. It's about protecting your offspring and um, the future of your gene, so to speak. So things about outgroups become unpleasant. But that is just, but but those are only perceived differences, of course, with the outgroup. Way, 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 way back in the day when we were nomadic and all we had were our kin. That was survival based, but we're not in that world anymore. And this speaks to earlier where I said, um, where I said that we have an old brain for a modern society. And it's, it's, it's very clear. We have, we, we make these distinctions that have far-reaching consequences right 400 years of african slavery still impacts black individuals today as just an example okay 1620 1619 when um the first black individuals or first slaves were brought over to the quote-unquote new world wasn't new to the people who are living here um and those still have far-reaching impacts as just an example of that so those in-group versus out-group biases are ingrained to modes of survival in our brain a good question glad you asked it again Uh, any other questions? Any other thoughts? Please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and end. Uh, oh, oh, Sophia. G good thing you almost caught me. Um, yeah, we'll talk about shooter buys tomorrow. Yeah, so drop that in your um, discussion post. I think you can edit if you've already posted it for tomorrow. But yeah, you can definitely talk about that. I think that's important. <laughs> That's important for current events as well, right? Right. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to end the stream there. Uh, because I think we've hit everything. I've previewed the next couple of days. And um, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, again, I am available after class in Zoom. Nobody comes and visits me. and um, But that's... You can email me. Um, uh, oh, actually, I do want to mention, because this question came up a couple of times. Um, the um, paper is in APA format, and the rest of the details are on the syllabus for how to compile it. One to two, pa uh, two pages, two to three pages, um, APA style, uh, two peer-reviewed outside sources, 
Uh, use your textbook if you haven't really done a lot of, of primary source searching to give you a, a leg up, but your textbook cannot be used as a primary source. It is a collection. Uh, the textbook is a collection of secondary sources. Or, sorry, the the textbook is a secondary source. It's a collection of primary sources. But what I want you to do is evaluate your arguments for the three concepts with two uh, primary sources. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, other than that, you all have a good day. If you're in the area, please stay dry and safe. Uh, the thunderstormans. That's thunderstorming, and uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. See you all next time. I don't know why I did that. <laughs>